going to be to use R to simulate the mid-domain hypothesis and test whether what's supposed to happen actually happens. So what what is this mid-domain hypothesis hypothesis saying? Well, first it should just be stated that it's it's a hypothesis to account for the disproportionate number of species that you find at the equator relative to the high or in equator more equatorial regions relative to higher latitudes. So the textbook gives a lot of different um, like physiological type explanations for this and some like historical explanations. Um, but this this explanation is basically says that um, if only random forces were at work, this is what you would expect to see. So what I want to do is see if that's true. So, to state the hypothesis, if, if we model the latitudinal limits of species distribution as a random interval nested in some larger interval, um, then the closer, if, okay, if we select some number, the closer that number is to the middle or the center of the larger interval we're considering, the greater the proportion of random intervals um, generated within that larger interval that will contain that number. So like basically you know it's like if you took a rectangular like strip of the earth that went from the North Pole to the South Pole and if not only the um, not only like the particular lat latitudinal location of the distribution like generally where it's found, but also like the actual size of the intervals. If all of those factors are random, uniformly distributed with no preferences, um, the idea is, or the, the hypothesis is saying, that you'll get more intervals that contain the middle of the domain. So like, just to illustrate it here, um, I tried to create some random intervals, and these could represent uh, like species distributions, right? Um, so, you know, it might be a small distribution that's mostly in the northern latitude, this might be a small distribution that's only in the southern latitude, this is like a large distribution that like, some, like these are just random, so they don't actually correspond to a specific species. But the idea is that like in the long run, oh and in my little <laughs> demonstration here, instead of having zero be the equator and going like positive and negative about that, it's just from zero to a hundred, because that's going to be... Easy, well, it's not really any more or less difficult to model it one way or the other. This just seemed sort of more obvious to me. Um, so the contention is that in the long run, this like silver line, which is close to 50, so it's close to like the middle of the domain, will hit more intervals than this line that's like close to 100. Okay, so let's see how we're going to simulate that. Um, I decided that 100,000 random intervals uh, somewhere in the 0 to 100 range would be sufficient to see if this is true. Um, I modeled... Um, okay, so to get these random intervals, basically I figured any two random numbers between 0 and 100 will make a random interval, and that there should be no preference for interval size or disposition within that range if you're taking any two random numbers. Like, you know, any two successive numbers are going to be uncorrelated, so you should be able, you, you can make a claim that these are random intervals. So what, I, what we want to do is we want to get, we want 100,000 random intervals, so I'm going to get 200,000 um, random instantiations from a uniform distribution with endpoints at 0 and 100, which is very like the picture that I drew over uh, in Sketchbook. Uh, um, okay, and then I'm just going to take this vector of numbers and I'm going to turn it into a matrix that's going to be a... it's going to have 100,000 rows and two columns, so the columns will represent the endpoints of the interval. Now the problem is that the way I've, I've made it there's no, there's absolutely nothing to say that the first number, that the number in the first column matrix is going to be smaller than, than the other number. And so for coding it, like, that can become kind of a pain in the butt. So what I did is I took this matrix and I've basically said that if the first number is the smaller of the two, 
then leave it alone. And if the second number is the smaller of the two, just swap the numbers in that row. And so I run through the entire um, right. So I'm, I'm I run through this and through all 100,000 rows of the matrix and do that. Blah blah blah. Okay, this is what I said in the other in the other part that we're considering. The integers 1 through 100 are going to be basically like latitudinal transects that, sl that slice through our little world containing our 100,000 intervals. And what I want R to do is give me a 1 if the interval smacks, um, or if the, the transect smacks into an interval, and 0 if it doesn't. Okay, and so then if I loop that through the entire matrix, I should be able to sum that vector and divide by 100,000 and get the proportion of intervals that contained that integer. Okay, so I've gone ahead and done that. And then my idea was to plot um, the proportions I get at each integer. So what we would expect, um, if the hypothesis is true, is we would see some kind of uh, like function or, well, it's not, a, well, okay, it's a discontinuous function, but I'm going to make it look continuous. But basically you'd expect some kind of like humped structure if there in fact are a higher proportion of hits in the middle of the domain. And you'd expect that to be like trailing off towards neg negligibly uh, small proportions as you get to the endpoints of the domain. And so I'm going to take everything here, pop it into R, which is like my favorite thing to do. And it's thinking, thinking, thinking. Ah. Okay, so does our quote unquote equator at 50 see a disproportionate share of the random species ranges that we've demonstrated or that we've simulated? And the answer is seems to be based on this simulation that there is a lot of truth to it. And so the question is like, is this intuitive? Is there something paradoxical about this? Um, I don't know. T to me, it wasn't entirely intuitive. Um, maybe with like a little bit thought that the intuition clears up, but at first glance, if you're telling me that you've got completely random intervals, within your range, to my mind, I want those also to be uniformly distributed, or to like somehow represent uniformity, whatever that means, when you're talking about like a series of intervals. So any, anyway, this, this does indeed confirm that the mid-domain hypothesis is at least uh, plausible in this simplified model situation. Thank you.